distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The first of all, I'd like to uh, uh, congratulate the HKPC uh, for its uh, contribution in the past and, uh, of course, happy 50th anniversary. And also I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to speak in this session. I've been asked to make uh, some remarks on the role of the Academy of Sciences of Hong Kong in the context of the development of a smart city. Now, however, speaking after Professor Tan is definitely not an easy task, <laughs> especially on the subject of artificial intelligence. And besides, the Academy of Sciences of Hong Kong has less than two years in existence. There's really very little I can bring to the discussion this morning except to tell you what we aspire to achieve and what we have done so far. Under the topic of a smart city, most conversations would immediately switch to or focus on smart technologies and innovation. However, I would argue that smart transportation, like uh, smart uh, vehicles, uh, uh, electric cars, uh, smart services like uh, e-banking, online shopping, and uh, smart living like uh, using old mobile services, uh, smartphone, smart house, wearable medical and health uh, gadgets, or even smart environment like uh, smart appliances, green uh, buildings, etc., are infrastructures. And where the HKPC has made important contributions in the past 50 years. I agree that they're essential, but perhaps not. But they're only, they're, they're only the hardware of a smart city, things that money can buy. Smart people, on the other hand, is, I would like to add, the software, and in my opinion, and alluded by Professor Tan, the heart or engine of a smart city. I agree with him that the artificial intelligence emulates human intelligence very well, but still far from achieving that. So what do we mean by smart people? Citizens who embrace the latest technologies, those who does uh, banking transactions or on the internet, or those uh, who knows how to use smart gadgets, I'm glad the acting chief executive talked about DNA. I would say that uh, smart consumers, they are just smart consumers, who are of course an important part of a smart city. I'm glad the Hong Kong government has also done a great deal in recent years to promote innovation and technology. However, I think a smart city must have a significant portion of innovative people or smart people who can help the city become smart and sustain its smartness, like those of smart infrastructures I mentioned earlier, thereby to provide its people a good quality of life and happy living. I would further argue that uh, uh, science literacy is a city, uh, uh, science literacy of a city is a good indication or reflection of its smartness. Let me elaborate. First of all, technology is now made available and accessible to individuals uh, to not only enjoy but also to harness as tools in ways that contribute to the good of oneself. A, a STEM, or we always use a STEM uh, as a science, technology, engineering, mathematics, a STEM literate society will enable its citizen to make good personalized decisions about their own living or their, li their own lives, which will in turn benefit the society as a whole. Second, science literacy, or more commonly said these days, uh, science literacy, as I mentioned earlier, is important for citizens to be able to participate in the debates on many global issues that require good understanding of how science works on issues such as global warming, environmental protection versus uh, economic growth, genetically modified food versus food safety, the ethical debate behind the use of embryonic stem cells as well as uh, cyber security versus privacy, etc., etc. In other words, science is not only for scientists. Everyone in a smart city needs to embrace scientific knowledge to enrich his or her daily life and make himself or herself competitive in a new economy, uh, the, the new knowledge economy. Simply put, a society needs science and technology and smart people to drive innovation, in turn brings future prosperity. Having said all that, I will echo what uh, Professor Tan said earlier, 
science technology is a driving force for our future. I would like to add also that our society needs a significant fraction of smart people with sufficient science uh, technology expertise to go deep, to build the foundation of sustained growth, a new knowledge economy with uh, uh, the latest technologies. Well, one, while one can teach science and technologies that propel innovation, innovation, on the other hand, is not something you can teach in a course or in lectures. I've been talking about innovation lately uh, in high schools. I think the students have acquired innovation or conceived innovative ideas through accumulation and assembly of knowledge and experience by themselves. In other words, a proper education system, or should I say, providing an environment conducive to learning and innovation is important for nurturing the brains of a smart city. In addition, as I mentioned earlier, a thriving research and development environment is essential for sustaining innovation and producing the technologies required for a new economy and for building the infrastructure of a smart city. These are some, but perhaps some important rationale behind the establishment of the Academy of Sciences of Hong Kong. Let me now tell you a bit about the Academy. First of all, Hong Kong is unquestionably a highly competitive city in science, uh, in scientific research and innovation with world-class universities. And by the way, we have five universities that are ranked in the top 100 in the world, although we understand ranking is not entirely a true measurement of greatness. <laughs> One thing we do know is that we have many distinguished academics in Hong Kong. We have over 50 scientists and researchers who are elected members of national academies and learned society organizations at the international scene. We also have a lot of the state key laboratories, and our scientists have won many national and international awards. Some would say that we're punching way above our weight. I say that we have the ingredients of a smart city. The Academy has four primary uh, objectives namely to advance the development of science and technology in Hong Kong, promote the education and science technology in Hong Kong, inform the public on issues pertaining to science and technology, and foster Hong Kong as a center of scientific excellence. The membership conferred by the Academy is regarded as Hong Kong's highest academic honor. Membership is for life, it's not restricted to scientists of Chinese nationality. Parenthetically, three successive presidents of the Chinese Academy of Sciences strongly encourages us to have this clause written into our bylaw. Accordingly, any local or overseas scientists who have made a significant contribution or distinguished contribution to the advancement of science and technology in Hong Kong, regardless of their nationality, are eligible to be elected. The Academy, being established less than two years, as I mentioned earlier, is still very young with only 27 founding members. Among them, I'm proud to say that 18 of them are also members of the Chinese Academy of Sciences or the, uh, Academy, of Science, uh, the Academy of Engineering. Despite our small size, uh, our membership have worked very hard, or our members, I would say, rather, uh, worked very hard to contribute to our society. While excellence in science and technology research is the first and foremost objective of the Academy, my fellow members of the Academy and I are aware of the importance of interplay between science and society. Serving as role models of future scientists, we want to attract youngsters into scientific research, invest into the future. We have also devoted much of our time in promoting and advancing the teaching of science and technology, educating and informing the public on relevant issues ensuring the sustainability of Hong Kong as a smart city. We have participated in many science education activities in schools and public fora, and spoke out on issues related to innovation and technology here in Hong Kong. Popularization of science in Hong Kong is definitely one of our major missions. Moreover, our members fully understand the importance of translating important discoveries and innovations into applications. We cooperate with the industrial and the industrial and the commercial uh, sectors to strengthen the application of research results. In addition, uh, the Academy has held many meetings in the past uh, two years with uh, other learned organizations, 
uh, and the uh, and the uh, not just locally but also uh, in uh, organizations from mainland and around the world. Uh, before I, I close, I must uh, state unequivocally that although my comments have been focusing on innovation and on science and technology, I would never attempt to downplay the importance of arts and humanity of a smart city. And for that matter, high ethical and moral standards as well as uh, personal integrity. Uh, people in a smart city must embrace multiple disciplines, have the ability to innovate, the capacity uh, to be inclusive, and the general willingness to share. So with this, I very much look forward to working with all of you to promote science, and, uh, science education and also through uh, innovation and technology to build a smart future for our cities and humankind. Thank you very much.